Everybody loves a really good savory biscuit. And we've had enough buttermilk biscuits lately probably, so let's try something a little bit different. Today we're making cream cheese layered savory biscuits. Now these are the flakiest, most tender biscuits ever. And if you're not a cream cheese lover, don't worry because my son hates cream cheese and he loves these. You can't really taste it. It just provides a certain level of fat in the layering and makes those biscuits so flaky, so good. So let's go to the kitchen and I'll show you how to do it. Start out by mixing three and a half cups of flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and one and a quarter teaspoon salt together in your food processor. We're gonna add in 16 tablespoons or two sticks of real butter. No cheating here because we need real butter. And we're gonna pulse that until we get it to chunks that are mostly the size of peas. You can have some bigger pieces in there. I have some bigger chunks there you can see and that's completely fine. I am not a user of any sort of vegetable oil based spreads or fake stuff, so use the real butter if you can get your hands on it. If you don't have a food processor, it's okay to use your hands to work this down. You just wanna make sure your butter doesn't melt with the heat of your hands. Then we're gonna add our buttermilk. Now I'm gonna tell you, always use real buttermilk. The subs don't really do the same thing. And then you're gonna add your herbs here. Now you could do garlic, you could do chives, you can do, I'm actually, this is a chive recipe. In this case, I think I only had dill in the kitchen and I threw that in too. So that works. Just whatever herbs you wanna use, you're gonna add those in and give it a stir. Now, primarily we wanna get this not so wet that it's sticking to everything, but also not so dry that you have bowl, you know, gobs of flour in the bottom of the bowl. Mine still had some pockets of flour in the bottom, so I added a little extra buttermilk. You see me struggling with, with my weak hands here, but I get an A for effort, I guess. So work that around until you've gotten most of the flour picked up off the bottom of the bowl, and then ditch your fork because everything's easier with clean hands. Dump that out onto your countertop, and you'll see in the bottom of the bowl there's still a little bit of dry flour there, you'll be able to knead a little bit of that in, but if you find that it's still crumbling apart in your hands and you're just not able to get it to, to pick up and take it, then add, pick up your buttermilk and just put another teaspoon or so on it until it grabs all that dry stuff. You just don't wanna make it super sticky. Yep, I needed just a little bit more because it was just wanting to crumble around the edges and you can see that it is kind of loose around those spots. So a little extra will help you get up your loose pieces. Then I rolled that out to, you know, roughly an eight by eight square. And I took a knife that I dipped in some flour and I cut it into three sections. Now we're adding three pieces. Uh, it's actually a half of a block of cream cheese that's been softened significantly. You can see it's very easy to spread. So we're gonna add a chunk of that to each one of those rectangles of dough. Now, I always prefer cultured cream cheese if you can get that, or if you can make it yourself, that's even better. Uh, but certainly any cream cheese you like will work in this recipe. It's really, no, no, there's no point in using the low-fat cream cheese because we've got so much butter in here that <laughs> I don't know what the point would be, but you're welcome to if you'd like. Then, once you use your impeccably clean hands to spread your cream cheese out, however you like it, then stack those pieces on top of one another. The top one you'll have to flip over so you end up with a double layer of cream cheese. Oh, yep, yeah, see, can't do that, Rachel. You can't use a rolling pin on top of that cream cheese. Come on. So flip it over. It's going to be fine. And then kind of gently press it down with your palm, add a little sprinkling of flour on the top so that your rolling pin doesn't stick. And then let's begin to roll that out. Get all that stuff out of your way so you can do something. I get tired of trying to make these pictures all pretty all the time. So <laughs> it's always just in my way. And then we're gonna roll this out until it's about two inches thick. You know, you don't wanna make it so thin that your biscuits never have a chance to really make those layers. So we wanna keep it decently thick you should be able to get about 16 two by two squares out of this. Now you can certainly cut circles with your biscuit cutter if you would like, but I'm just using a floured knife. And remember, if you're using a biscuit cutter, you always go straight down into the dough and straight up, don't twist that cutter or you'll lock it down and your biscuits will not rise. And once you have all your squares cut, you're going to transfer these to a parchment paper lined baking sheet and you're going to freeze them in the freezer for about 20 minutes before you put them in the oven. That gives the butter time to re-solidify so that they make lots of layers when they bake. And look, you can see all those really flaky layers in there. 
They're going to bake at 400 for about 25 minutes until they're golden brown and absolutely melt in your mouth delicious. In case you needed a little extra butter, feel free to put some on there. Dip them into your favorite soup or have them alone. They are absolutely wonderful. There are plenty of great soup recipes here on the channel that you can use with this biscuit recipe. You can find one right here for you. And I will see you in the next video. It has meant the world to me to be able to be with you today. And I will see you again as soon as I possibly can. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Bye.